Good morning, Year 3. Um, so, we are going to be looking at the same text we looked at yesterday, so it's still Jewel with a Scrap Box, um, but it's going to be a different set of questions um, for the text. So, um, basically, a lot of these comprehensions are going to be in that format, just to forewarn everyone. Um, it's going to be like a set A and then a set B, um, so that's just how a lot of these go, but I'll still do guided comprehension videos in this sort of style as well. Um, so I'm happy to read it again, because um, it's quite a short text. I might not read it again every time if it's a long text, but this time I will, um, just because it was quite a good poem. So, um, here we go. Scrap metal monster, scrap metal school, black metal, rap metal, dark metal ghoul, scrap metal mountain, scrap metal hall, sharp metal, death metal, spike metal tall, scrap metal mayhem, scrap metal wall, stack metal, pack metal, dense metal hall, Scrap metal manhunt, scrap metal brawl, crack metal, whack metal, crash metal fall, scrap metal meltdown, scrap metal cruel, tossed metal, lost metal, rust metal all. There we go. Um, so, exactly the same text as we did yesterday, so we're just now going to look at the second set of questions. As you can see, they are still in sections um, like vocabulary and retrieval and things like that. Um, so, vocabulary questions first. Number one. Um, what could the word stack mean in the poem? Tick one. So, uh, oh, sorry, tick two, isn't it? Tick two for that one. Um, so tick two. So make sure we have tick two for that one. So um, stack, uh, hopefully we're able to know what that word means. Um, so the two, it should be, are uh, to pile pieces of scrap metal on top of each other. That's to stack something, obviously. And um, it's the very next one underneath that one. To make a tall metal structure like a chimney. That's another form of stacking. Um, if we just look to the other two, though, you can very clearly see that's nothing to do with stacking. To make a haystack using metal. Um, and to have a secret supply of metal. So, again, those aren't relevant. Um, question number two. Look at verses four and five. Find and copy the word that tells us the scrapyard was an unkind, dangerous place. So again, read the question carefully. Find and copy the word. So think, how many words is that going to be that we actually need to copy down? Hopefully we've correctly identified that is one word because it says find the word. If it said find the words, it would be more than one, but it's only find the word. So find the word. So for verses four and five, I'm just going to look at that in my text now. Um, verses four and five. Uh, we're looking for a word that tells us the scrapyard was an unkind or dangerous place. Um, the only word I can see is in the fifth verse, and that's the word cruel. So that's the word I would have written down, cruel. And um, just to show you in mine, it would be cruel. There we go. Question number three. Um, tossed metal, lost metal, rust metal, all. What does tossed mean in this sentence? Tick one. So hopefully we knew what the word tossed meant. Um, and the only word that I can see comes even close to that is the word thrown. So thrown is the one we should have ticked for that one. Because obviously it means the same thing as to toss something. Uh, so moving on to the retrieval questions. Question number four. What do the robots fighting in the scrapyard do after the manhunt? So, again, if it were me, it's a retrieval question. I know I need to take something from the text and write it down. So I'm now going to have a look back through the text and I'm going to look for the words in the question. It says, what do the robots do after the manhunt? Think of the keyword I'm going to be looking for. I'm looking for the word manhunt. So I'm going to find manhunt in the text. There it is, verse 4, scrap metal manhunt. And it says, what do they do after the manhunt? So I'm going to look at the very next line. That says, scrap metal brawl. So the word I need to write down is brawl. Okay, that's the one. Um, oh, sorry, it was a tick one there, wasn't it? Yes, it was a tick one there. Sorry, because I've handwritten them for mine. Um, but yeah, that's exactly what they do after the manhunt, isn't it? So brawl is the correct answer. Um, question number five. I guarantee this is going to trip people up. Um... But again, it's not that hard when you actually see how to do it. So it says here, use the table below to describe the pattern of this poem. So this is where you actually have to read the table, think about what you need to put into each section. So we've got verses, repeating patterns and rhyme. So you need to describe each of those features 
And again, this comes into knowledge of poems and how they're structured. So we're looking at verses, first of all. So verses, um, what can you tell me about the verses? So again, if you look at the poem, you can see that there are how many verses? If you actually count them down, we should be able to see that there are five verses. And what do you notice about the verses? You should notice that each verse has got three lines. So I've written down, there are five verses with three lines in each verse. That's enough said for the verses. Um, repeating patterns. Hopefully, it was very clear what the repeated part of this whole poem is. It was scrap metal going throughout the entire poem. But if you want to be even more specific, I also noticed that every first line actually has the first word with starting with an M. If you notice, it's scrap metal monster, scrap metal mountain, scrap metal mayhem, scrap metal manhunt, and scrap metal meltdown. So I actually wrote down... Scrap metal M is repeated at the start of each verse because I can literally see that pattern going throughout the whole thing. Um, and the last line of each verse is made up of an adjective and metal. If you notice, it's always like metal ghoul or uh, metal tall. It's something like that. So it's always adjective and um, the word metal. Um, but again, if you'd have just put down that you notice scrap metal is being repeated, I think I'd have given you the mark for that one because that's clearly what the repeating pattern is. I'm just being even more specific um, to try and get maximum marks for that one. Um, and rhyme. Um, so where do we notice the rhyming parts in here? Well, um, I've written the second and third lines all rhyme of every single verse, if you notice. Um, so the rhyming bits I wrote down are school, ghoul, hall, tall, wall, uh, hall, brawl, fall, cruel, and all. Okay, all of those are rhyming couplets in there, so those are all the rhyming bits. If you'd have listed some of those, though, that would have got you the mark. I've just listed all of them to make sure I've definitely got the mark. Um, okay, question number six. Find and copy two words that describe the metal's appearance. So find and copy two words that describe the metal's appearance. So appearance, you need to know what that word means. Appearance means what something looks like. So um, can we find and copy two words that describe the metal's appearance? So the words I found were dark and black. Um, so just find again where those were in the text, dark and black. Uh, yeah, in the very first, very first verse right there, black metal, rap metal, dark metal, gold. Yeah, first verse, that's where I got those. Okay. Uh, question number seven, moving on to the inference questions now. Um, so, what impressions do you get of the scrapyard poem? Give two impressions using evidence from the text to support your answer. So, um, we've got a table that says impression and evidence. So, what impressions do you get of the scrapyard in the poem? And it says to use evidence. Now, when we use evidence from the text, what that means is that you have to literally copy a little bit of the text and write it down. OK, that doesn't mean copy an entire verse or an entire paragraph, for example. You'd only take the specific part you need and use that as evidence. OK, that's how we evidence something in a text. It means to prove your point. So the impression that I'm getting, I'm going to say is one thing. And then I'm going to use evidence to back up what I'm saying. So. Here's what I've written down for my impression for the very first one. Um, I've said, I think that the scrapyard could be a scary place because of all the dangers listed. OK, so that's my impression. I think the scrapyard could be a scary place because obviously I know there's a lot of battles and things going on. So now I need the evidence to back that up. So the evidence I've written down is scrap metal mayhem, scrap metal manhunt and scrap metal brawl. All three of those back up my point that it's a scary place because I've got is a mayhem in there, it's a manhunt and it's a brawl. OK, all those things tell me that it's a scary and dangerous place. OK. Um, so my second point is I think the scrap guard could be considered dangerous. OK, so I'm focusing on the danger this time rather than just being scary um, because of all the types of scrap metal listed. OK. That's why it could be dangerous to actually walk in there yourself because it's a lot of different types of scrap metal. So what types of scrap metal are there? I'm now going to give my evidence. My evidence is sharp metal, death metal, 
spike metal tool. All three of those tell me it's dangerous. It's sharp metal, death metal, definitely dangerous, and spike metal, I can assume that's very dangerous as well. So all three of those things tell me this is a dangerous place. So as we can see, I'll just show you how I've written mine. So I've made my points and then I've backed them up with my evidence, okay? That's how we get full marks. You need to be very specific in order to get the full marks, okay? Um, question number eight. What do you think the line scrap metal meltdown means? What does scrap metal meltdown mean? So again, this comes down to knowing what the word meltdown actually means. Now it's interesting because the word meltdown could mean two different things here because a meltdown um, could literally be melting something down, okay, literally melting something, but a meltdown could also be having a bit of a panic about something. So um, that's why I've written both in mine, because it's got two lines, as I can see, so it's not going to be a one word answer. I know I need to write a sentence or two. So I've written, um, what do you think the line scrap metal meltdown means? My answer is it refers to someone getting very upset or having a big argument. OK, that's my idea of having a panic attack about something. So I'm um, getting very upset or having a big argument. And um, it can also refer to scrap metal literally be melting down. OK, so literally melting the scrap metal down. That's why scrap metal meltdown could be seen both ways. OK, um, it depends how you've interpreted the poem. So I've identified that it could be both. That way I've definitely got the mark. I could have just put one and maybe get the mark. But put them both, I guaranteed myself that I'm getting that mark. Okay, question nine. Look at the thought bubbles showing what a robot involved in the manhunt and brawl in verse four might be thinking. Tick the one that is the most unlikely. Tick the one that is most unlikely. So we've got four to choose from and we need to tick the one that is the most unlikely. So which one of those do we think they wouldn't be thinking? And we're looking at verse four when they are involved in the manhunt and brawl. So they're involved in a manhunt and a brawl. Now we talked about what those words mean yesterday, didn't we? So a brawl is a type of fight. And obviously a manhunt is also referring to something quite dangerous. Um, so let's think, which one of those ones would they not be thinking? So I hope I don't fall. Well, I mean, they're involved in a fight. They could be thinking that. Don't hit me with that metal. Um, again, if they're fighting, they might be thinking that. Um, oh no, this is really dangerous. Well, we've already talked about how dangerous this is. So the only one I can see that it could be is let's build a scrap metal mountain. Now they've done that to confuse you, you see, because scrap metal mountain is mentioned in the poem, isn't it? So you would think, oh, okay, it's not that. But let's build a scrap metal mountain is kind of like that's what i'm thinking i'm thinking let's build one they're not thinking that they're thinking of fighting each other so we know that is the most unlikely so that one is the one we should be ticking let's build a scrap metal mountain is the most unlikely thought um, question 10 write a blurb or description of this poem for a friend in your class now we may not have known what a blurb was um, you may have done but it does also say or description. But a blurb is basically when you look at the back of a book, if you took take any book, any reading book you've got and turn it over on the back, there will be a little bit of um, writing on the back. And that basically tells you what the story is going to be about. So um, basically, that's how I wrote mine. Um, I could have done a description and literally just described um, what the poem is like to my friend. But instead, I've sort of done it as a blurb that's how I've written mine so here's what I've written mine as you can see there's one two three four five lines on there so it's got to be quite detailed in order to get the full mark so let me read out mine I've said Jewel of the Scrap Bots is a fairly short poem made up of five verses with three lines in each one the poem uses repetition for effect and has rhyming lines to keep the poem uh, flowing nicely when you read it the language in the poem describes the robot creatures as dangerous machines who enjoy brawling. So that way, I've not given too much away in the poem, but I have detailed the main points that are in the poem. OK, I've outlined it. I've told you that there's five verses and three lines. I've told you it's got repetition. And then I went into detail about what the poem is about. 
I said it's about robots having a brawl. So that way, very, very clear. And would have got me the full marks. So again, I've listed a few points in there to get the full marks, not just one. And as you can see, the clue is, you can see the number of lines, that tells me my answer needs to be more detailed than just maybe one or two points. Um, question 11, moving on to authorial intent. So, why do you think the poet chose the word school in the first verse? Tick the statements that you agree with below. So this time, it doesn't specify tick one or tick two. It says tick the statements. So it could be more than one. OK, could be three, could be all four. But we actually have to read all the statements and work out which ones we agree with. Now, obviously, we have to agree with the correct statements. So let's look at what we've got. We've got the scrapyard is in the school. Now, this is the key thing, because I've noticed in this one, actually, just looking at it, three of these points talk about school. OK, now let's just think about it. Look back at the text again. It only said scrap metal school, didn't it? Now, it's all down to how we interpret that. OK, does it mean the scrap metal was in the school? I don't think so. OK, we know this is a scrapyard with lots of pieces of dangerous metal. That one's not true, is it? The scrapyard is in the school. It's not in the school, is it? OK, so that one's definitely not true. OK, robots play schools in the scrapyard. Um, well, it does say scrap metal school. We know that this isn't in a school. So we've got to think, why would the author have said scrap metal school at all? OK, so that one's looking like it could be true. So I'm just going to read the others, just have another look. Robots are learning lots about themselves and their friends in the scrapyard. Um, well, yes, they're fighting, um, but also they are technically listing lots of different types of scrap metal. So that one's looking like it could be true. Let's just look at the last one. Robots are building a new school out of scrap metal. Well, it doesn't say anything else about building a school. OK, it only mentions scrap metal school. So we've got to think, what is the point of the author saying the word school? OK, now I think the only one that actually logically fits is going to be that robots play schools in the scrapyard. Because it sounds to me like, although they're fighting, maybe they're just pretending to be robots. Maybe this is children pretending to be robots and just playing outside and having sort of a pretend fight. Um, it could be that. So I think that one, robots play schools in the scrapyard. That one is true. And the only other one that can be true, because we've already agreed that the first one and the last one are not true, and we know that it says tick the statements, so it's got to be more than one. OK, tick the statements has to be more than one. So the only other one that can be true is robots are learning lots about themselves and their friends in the scrapyard. Because technically they are. They are listing lots of different things, lots of different types of scrap metal. So that one is also true. It's a tricky one, that one, I think, because you have to really try and understand what the point of the poem was and what the author was trying to get across to you. Um, so those two are the correct ones. And question 12. So this is the compare one. Look at verses three and four. From the information in the poem, do you think it would be safer to A, build a scrap metal wall or B, have a manhunt than brawl? So it says circle one. So you've got circle one of those two points. Which one is um, it safer to do? Is it safer to build a scrap metal wall or to have a manhunt than a brawl? And then it says, explain your answer referring to the poem. So again, this is where we have to write our explanation and use evidence from the text to back up what we're trying to say. So which one is safer? I think that one is obvious, okay? It is definitely safer to A, build a scrap metal wall. OK, it's definitely not safe to have a fight or a brawl, is it? Not, not, not safe to have a manhunt or a brawl. Those two things are very dangerous, so we know that we're not going to do that. So A is definitely the correct one. But now we have to explain our answer. So again, if we look at the number of lines, we've got three lines here, so it's got to be fairly detailed. Here's what I've written for mine. I've said it would be safer to build a scrap metal wall because it is more dangerous to have a manhunt than a brawl. That just got my point out straight away. I know this because, and this is where I'm backing myself up, I know this because in the fourth verse it ends with the line crack metal, whack metal, crash metal, fall. So I've quoted that, I've literally copied that down from the text, which does not seem safe at all. Okay, so I've really backed up my point. 
Okay, I've said it would be safer to build a wall because the other option is very dangerous. And I've given you a reason why it's dangerous. I didn't just say because it's dangerous. I said it's dangerous because in the text it says crash, crack metal, whack metal, crash metal, fall. All those things tell me it's very dangerous. Okay, so that has now reinforced my point. So once again, um, this afternoon I will upload photos of my... That's my doorbell. Um, I will upload photos of um, my own writing, just to show you how I've set all my answers out. Um, but well done to anybody who's had a go at these um, by themselves. Tomorrow there will be a new text in the same sort of style, so we'll be doing set A of a different text tomorrow. Um, and I'll be guiding you through it the same way. But well done if you are having a go at this yourself. That's really, really good, um, because at the end of the day, um, it's better to try yourself and then compare with me because then you can sort of see how to improve your own um, comprehension skills and that's really going to help boost our reading levels up so well done everyone keep working hard and I will uh, be available for any questions or anything in relation to your work if you can upload your photos as you have done yesterday that'd be great take care